What's up y'all, it's Shuffle, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the best builds for each hero. We're focusing on plug and play viability, and so we're going to focus on one path, one set of skills, and if you want more in-depth stuff on every path and teams and the like, make sure to check out the class guides that I make. We have Jester coming up tomorrow, ideally, so we'll see what happens. Anyway, if you enjoy the content... Hit subscribe, the like, check out the box below, ways to support the channel, Patreon, Discord if you want to join the community, great stuff. And we're going to talk about the best way to make these characters. Speaking of the best way to do things, check out today's sponsor. Thank you Boot.dev for sponsoring today's video. Boot.dev is the place where you can learn about backend development. It focuses on teaching you the coding essentials such as Python and JavaScript, while also having projects to help build your own portfolio to shop around when you eventually look for a job in the field. The lessons are structured for those of us who are gaming enthusiasts. You level up your profile as you complete courses and receive various rewards upon doing so. This helps to keep you in the mentality of learning to eventually work on game dev projects since you're constantly surrounding yourself in that environment. Since the entire process is online, you can do as much or as little as you want depending on what your schedule allows. Individual lessons usually take a few minutes. The prompt and explanation are presented on the left side, and the exercise is on the right. A lot of people in this community like to work on game mods which require some scripting knowledge, so if you're looking to learn more about that or eventually work in the field to bring other projects to life, this is a great way to do it from your own home. Click the link below to learn more, and if you do sign up, make sure to use the promo code on screen. Thanks again, boot.dev, and now let's get back to the video. Make sure to check out the link below and the promo code and all of that. It's a pretty cool service. I was using it for a couple hours, and I enjoyed it. So let's get to the actual content. So with... uh. The builds, let's talk about Plague Doctor, Petey. I'm going to keep them in the thematic attire, so it's probably going to be pretty obvious what they are at a glance. Some of these really aren't surprising. Some of them might be, you know. Plague Doctor. We're going to do Alchemist because it's still busted. Really no reason to do something else. These are your four main skills. You can use Ounce sometimes. Blinding Gas might be pretty good. Disso's okay. Magrain, probably the best follow-up because you can get rid of corpses and do a little more burn and stuff, and that's helpful. Also, Vapor's Mastered, giving speed, is strangely helpful. So don't sleep on that. Next up is Grave Robber, my personal favorites, and I decided on Venom Drop. Again, a lot of usability in all of these, but I feel like Venom Drop's the easiest just row into the party and then she can kind of do what she needs to without too much assistance this is the first version of it so we get the bonus blight pen on shadow fade upgrade it gives speed this is a dot centric path obviously flashing puts out an unethical amount of damage especially mastered even unmastered with that that resist pen and stuff like that. You know, you just get this massive stack of blight on two people. Darts do a lot of blight as well and can hit all positions. Very helpful. And then your last couple depend on what's happening. If you're not doing a boss, something like pick to the face is good just to get something in case you don't need the blight or can't blight something. And then Dead of Night to control bodies, but also give you stealth, so you can get your bonuses here for these two, because you have to be in stealth. If you're fighting a boss where corpses are not a thing, you could run something like this. So having the ability to reset your Shadow Fade with Lunge is helpful. You have Absinthe to heal. This is a pretty good one. And pretty much it after that. We still have Flashing Daggers... But if it's not a if it's not a group boss or there's multiple parts or something, you could I guess swap this for something else. This one might be a little surprising. The core three are these. We're not gonna run duelist. The reason being a common complaint with this path is that there's too much repose and not enough time to spend it if you stay game. 
you can still use duelist in pbs or grape shot like those are still totally fine but i think in terms of like action efficiency i like these three a bit more because wicked slice gets execute two on upgrade only on this path that's kind of nuts execute two is really good it hits pretty hard and pistol shot being able to stun from like rank two is still really good you know sharp shot you get a little bit more damage off of it but i've really been liking the ability to stun big threats and now that you're not penalized for running range as rogue it's a good combo take aim you can use unmastered but you definitely want the mastery so this is our repost generation we get more combo off repost obviously but also we get bonus damage turn start repost or round start i guess and a little bit of speed never hurts so this is pretty good so you just press this you have repost for the next couple turns you're not you know drowning in repost because you have like 14 tokens you can't spend you just get one a turn that should be enough or the other stuff depending on the team tracking is actually really good just mostly for the no setup combo like you just ping something get through dodge you set up a combo combo on random stuff can be really good especially on rank one now they can hit there you don't need to run that double cross also a good contender double vol voln is really good but after that like i said you can run like robbery for certain encounters you can run double tap if you want the bonus damage you don't really need to execute though that you have wicked slice but if you just want a little more damage it's there but i really think these three are the core and then tracking if you need it double cross if you don't really know what else to do you can still do duelist pbs i probably take off take aim at that point and grape shots okay too so. <clears throat> lots of cool stuff surprisingly fun covers pretty much all of the bases you still get the repositioning, so either you have to run that, that set of skills or you have to consider the rest of the team and how you're going to manage that. Man at Arms. This was a bit difficult in terms of the skills. I think Wanderer is actually the best path. The other paths are okay, but Wanderer by and large didn't really get nerfed like that hard and he still has all the stupid tools that make him really good so you have crush obviously with the reach and the self heal is kind of stupid you have defender which has one turn cooldown but still really powerful hold the line just because even a knockback one becomes like a, a huge benefit to him because he can go forward one get some block double block even and if there's a random combo he can stun them like that's pretty sick you can even set this up yourself. Like if you had strategic withdrawal in the hold the line. You know, if you wanted to do something like that, but bolster, usually I keep it on as insurance, but like the first few fights, if you're at like zero stress, you can swap it off and like run bellow. That could be okay. Thank you, Rainy, for the tip. But other than that, uh retribution's still fine. Courageous abandon, actually. Sammy mentioned this. It's really freaking hard. So if you want to run that instead, also an option. Probably have to drop. You don't have to drop stand fast, actually, but you know, it's an option. Otherwise, I would say these four are kind of the go-to. Because stand fast, you get taunt, you get block, you get block every turn. Pretty nuts. Defender can be swapped every other turn. So you're protecting multiple people technically between taunting and then guarding certain people. And you get block. Like a ton of block from it every turn. And then if you ever need to heal, there's Crush. Really just goes into any team easily. No thinking, no effort. Because Man at Arms is so matchup based against the enemies. So as long as you know what to bring to the fight, you don't have to worry about the rest of the team around him. Then we have Hellion, Ravager, of course, just because of the ridiculous damage output. And like the other paths have places, you know, but. They're more nuanced, I guess. Ravagers just brain off, hit buttons, do damage. The only real choice you're making here is possibly... Like for Howling End, are you doing Wicked Hack instead of Howling End? Or Howling End over that? Or you take off Revelry. 
and do like something like this so you can set up your big nuke but these kind of step on each other's toes so i would say it's either howling in with these four or wicked hack with these four early on bloodlust is good to remove winded but you should get toe-to-toe -to -toe mastered asap usually by region two so valley master a couple things that are important next in master toe-to-toe -to -toe if you're gonna be running howling in next jester this one was probably the toughest to nail down because he has actually quite a few good things. In Wanderer, you still get the support, the movement, you get the extra action Encore, and you can ballot the rank one person. All of these are super good. So I don't know if there's anything better than this, just in terms of like the plug and play viability. Other stuff to be considered, Soloist with you know, solo into either finale or like a melee thing. You'll see more about this in my next video. And then Mezzo surprisingly shows up because you still get the extra turn finale. And then you can run probably something like this, you know. You get the big buff, you get solo. So you get finale. This is arguably the best finale because it has no use limits. And you get double damage off bleed and combo, which he can set himself. Kind of crazy, but I would say for most situations, it would just be, uh, what is it? Uh, Wanderer. So pretty easy, pretty simple, very effective. Then we have Lepore, Leper. And it was between Tempest and Poet. Monarch's only good for the mountain. Wanderers just don't use it, you know, because there's just better stuff. But uh, I think Poet's probably the best one. There are a couple tricks to Poet, too. So even though he just has, like, a bit lower damage and he gets, like, the stun and move res, both these are really good. You know, you still have a decent damage on Chop. So if you need to throw out damage, it's there. Bash is still super good. Solemnity's stronger. Really nice. Intimidate. Extra taunts. Not bad. Withstand. Extra defense is really good. But there's this... This thing that people like to do with Poet, and that's run Ruin, because you still get like really good damage scaling, and Poet has a better self-heal, so if you need to recover off of that, it's pretty nice. Plus, it's harder to disrupt him, because you have stun and move resist. So, probably better for bosses, or just really action-intensive fights. Depending on like the region, you know, like if there's not a lot of buffs going out, like the shroud, enemies just swing every turn for the most part, then ruin gets better. But yeah, don't sleep on that. Otherwise, intimidate. Still find a slot in, still good utility. Occultist. One of my personal favorites. Ritualist, I think, is the 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 front horse, the front runner, whatever you want to call it. Because you get the the boosted healing is helpful. Because weird kind of sucks normally. This helps it suck slightly less. But then you get these really strong curses that are more um, likely to stick because of the piercing. So like I've been saying for some of the other ones, this is like the core three. And then for road fights, you can do like sack stab, demon's pull. Really just solid combo, setting combos. And uh, moving people around, disrupting, get rid of corpses and stuff. Another one for... Either certain boss fights or road fights, you can run Binding Shadows to charge up Burning Stars on your off turns if you just find yourself doing that. Or if you really want to, you can combo into your own Sack Stab and get the extra, you know, uncheck power and do it that way. But the thing I want to talk about too is for bosses like mountain bosses or just most layer bosses that get multiple actions. Do not be afraid to swap in Chaotic Offering and Malediction because Malediction is such a boss melter that it really deserves to be ran at most applicable times. The Mastery is obviously much more helpful for the extra res debuff on the other stuff so things stick more often. And also with Malediction, there's um, a little optimization if you want to do it where when you hit unchecked power, you get four, or if you hit chaotic offering, you get four unchecked power over the skill use. It takes three turns to get there. You get one immediately and then three more. You can spend two immediately 
like next turn you can do your thing and then the other turn you can use something else and then the fourth turn you have your fourth unchecked power and you can throw this like malediction stars whatever and since you can't stack up to four you can only hold three at a time as i said small optimization you can hit chaotic offering do other stuff for the turn two turn three you have three unchecked power and you can malediction turn four you get two unchecked power and you can malediction again and this really helps it compound itself because you can have two versions of the debuff up at a time they're closer together so your ability to ramp because like the the debuff they get slower you get up to minus 40 and then every time you hit them you get two dots you know you might roll different ones and that can really help if you don't have them all up at the same time there's a lot of good stuff you can do here you can even do the same thing for stars though like if you don't use stars again just throw them out back to back but i think malediction is better for doing the uh, the two, like the four uncheck power setup. And again, plug and play goes anywhere very easily. Great for a lot of things. If someone dies on the way to the inn, really good character to just grab and throw in. I like him. And then we have for, what is it, Bonnie? I should put on the arsonist setup. You only run orphan if you want rank one for certain fights. Or if you have burn rest trinkets, somehow, like if you get them out of the working fields, gotcha. Otherwise, arsonist is really just throw her in the party. She doesn't need help. She just throws bombs and smoke screens. It's really nice. So, again, these are your core three. Please, the most common dot in the game. So, cauterize usually finds a use. You don't always have to run it. Like, if you go to... I don't know, just somewhere where it's not as common, like the Sprawl or uh, the Fetter, even though it can still show up. Then maybe you don't need to run Cauterize the whole time, but it's still there. Other than that, just got some utility skills like run and hide just to keep her in the back where she wants to be with a setup like this. And then you have like a kind of a flex pick, so you can do Backdraft, not Backdraft, Firestarter. I don't know why I said backdraft. You can do fire starter if you just want to buff someone else. Hearthlight, you know, if it's mastered and applicable. Ransack, if you have like a dance team, they can do that. Control burn, pretty good overall. Really good in boss fights because any boss that's sitting there getting multiple turns, it ticks every time on their turn, so it can effectively stretch it out to like six or nine procs. This is really good. So, I usually run this for most intents and purposes. Flagellants. You only need one button. Doesn't matter what path you have. You just press this stupid thing over and over. Just press more and more every time it's up. But since it has a cooldown of one, you need to do something else in between that. Maybe a punish, maybe a sepsis. Okay, we'll, we'll fill out the whole thing. I, I don't want to leave you with just that. So deathless, also good. Like, these are the core four for most builds, except outside of, like, Scourge. And then, uh, yeah, if you're running Scourge, it changes a bit, but I think Wanderer is actually really good on him, so I'm just going to focus on that. The other ones are uh, a bit more specialized, but running, like, running this on Wanderer is really effective. You get a little bit of damage, you get a really good Sepsis, you still have more and more, you have Deathless, which is good, and then you have a buff Lash. Like, your Lash's Gift buffs someone else and removes stun and stuff. That's pretty good. Again, drop them in, like, rank 2. Good to go. Vestal. I think Confessor won in terms of the balancing when she got reworked. So, we're going to use Confessor. Get some pretty nice debuff setup here. On Judgment Master, you get a stun, which is kind of insane. Though this is really good. You still have, like, Stress Heal on Sanctuary. You have Consecration of Light, which is really good damage. Just drop it on a damage dealer. And then for your last couple, Ministrations is always helpful because damage over time just appears everywhere. And this is, like, a one-button answer. If you don't care about possibly losing Conviction, then you can run Grace. And, you know, your Conviction gets split between a couple things. Otherwise, you can also do Mantra if tokens are an issue, like negative tokens. 
If you want to make sure all of your conviction goes into judgment, then maybe comfort? Or illumination for certain boss fights. I forgot about that because removing positive tokens is very helpful. But yeah. So really depends. If you don't want to dump conviction into judgment, then you have a little bit more freedom. But if you want that stun and that solid damage, you know, and those debuffs, then you probably want to save it for that. Because with conviction and vestal, that says right here. So every stack of conviction that she gets that token she gets debuff as piercing i believe it's 10 percent per or it's five five or ten i can't remember off the top of my head does it show me actually glossary save me no it just says empower certain skills but yeah either way you get penetration and that's very helpful to have and so you have to decide if you're going to spend it on judgment or if you're going to go more focused on pure defense you can run all of it but I think, you know, choosing that early is more paramount to succeeding. Duelist, if you want plug and play, not super team dependent, it's probably antagonist. Wander is also a close second. If you run a specialized team where you have someone to buff, Instructress is good, but we're going to focus on antagonist. And the main thing to do here is to get to Shea Mastered very soon. Doesn't have to be immediately, but it is good to do. And then you just pick your stance that you want to be in and you just throw debuffs the whole time, which is really helpful. Like Vuln every single turn on a pretty good reaching move can really help your damage dealers. Plus it hits for a decent amount itself. Faint if you want to flip your stance and then we get into the cool stuff after. So, well, I say cool and then I go to meditation. Meditation is whatever. Meditation is just really powerful. So this way you can get some taunt or if you're in aggressive and you don't want to be there anymore you can flip to defensive and then also get repost and that's a bit helpful but your last couple of things are pretty cool so you have the boot thing set combo if you're an aggressive or stun them if they are comboed you know master or unmastered as well but master you get the combo setup that's a pretty good move it's disruptive and then coup de grace gives you a lot of debuffs in aggressive and then if you're in defensive, I was blanking for a sec, but if you're in defensive, you get a free stun. So your turn one could be like, if she's in rank two, you can just touche, get into stance, and then just stun something or meditate and then stun something immediately. And that's really good as a tempo opener. You know, you get a little bit of dodge to protect yourself and then you just stun something. If you want to go the other way, if you want to get like all the debuffs, you know, you could start with like prep. But I think this setup's just a bit better. And then finally, Banneret. I would not run this in the back. And even though he has the the zealous where you can hit the back line, and he has the omni positional heal, meaning he can use it everywhere. I think you give up a bit too much for doing that you know you have a bulwark which is a really 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 strong skill even on master it's really good and you can still support from anywhere obviously so you still get a bit of bonus damage off of combo smite if you want to do that you can also stun on combo smite and remove crit which is a really good one to get rid of and then after that you know, if he's up front, the only other thing to consider is maybe like tenacity because it gives everyone block and it can remove stun, which is pretty good. You can run this as the back rank version, which is like Holy Lance and maybe Zealous or whatever. But I really think this is the better way to do Banneret. That's my preferred way anyway. So that's it for the characters, I believe. Yes, it is. So let me know what you're thinking in the comments. Let me know what your opinions are on good builds. Obviously, Best is subjective, but I I like these choices a lot. I talked about them publicly on stream. I talked about them in Discord, you know, got some feedback and stuff. So that's where I ended up. If you, again, want more tips on the specific builds and whatnot for each character, like all the paths and all that, then check out the hero guides. They're in the new player section of the channel. Thanks for watching. Check out the boot.dev link. Very cool sponsor. Again, thank you. And I'll see you next time.